Coach Ryan, you uh, you brought the number one 215 pounder in the country when there was 215, Andrew Campotano, four-time New Jersey State champion, and then a uh, four-time state champion from Ohio Camp to sorry. Fourth for you as a freshman and in NCAs. Both guys are no longer with the team. This is probably the hardest part of your job. How do you handle situations like that when, when guys come here and they maybe don't meet your expectations as, and not as athletes, Cam was an All-American, yeah. very good. How hard is that for you to, to move forward without guys like that? You know, I would say that uh, it's difficult. You know, it's difficult from the standpoint, most fundamentally, from a relationship side of things. You sit in someone's living room, you share with them how we're going to help develop you as a person and a leader and a student and if someone's going to make a difference in the community. So you sit in their living room, you share this with them, they get to know you, you establish a relationship, and you grow together. You know, with, with the understanding that it's a loyal two-way street of growth. I got your back, you got my back, we're going to help you. On the other side of this is I'm 44 now. They're young people. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to fall. And not that you, 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 you come to expect that, but you understand that the reality is that at times people fall. Uh, losing Andrew was, was first, first and foremost, and, and not to be you know, deep and, for lack of a term, corny about it, it was hurtful. You know, what happened, the mistakes he made were, were mistakes that you just can't make. And there are rules. And is it about Andrew? Is it about Cam? There are rules. And either you follow them or you can't compete for us. And it's, it's, really, it's relatively black and white. So, unfortunately, they were unable to follow the rules of the program. Um, forgiveness is critical. I've already forgiven them. I hope they've forgiven me for the choices I've had to make to remove them from the team. And, and hopefully we go on and, and later in life, we or, or tomorrow, we connect and these guys go on and do big things with their life. But uh, from a, now from a program standpoint, I mean, you're counting on people to be in your lineup. These are huge recruits. I mean, they were the ones that were going to lead us to the promised land. And then to get uh, some of the, have some of the choices made that they did, it's, it's, it's tough on a program to lose people that you put a lot of time into. It's also tough on relationships. Being a boss, you know, it's like you're actually essentially their yeah. boss by being the head coach, and you're you're more of a CEO head coach. I think one of the better ones, and you do a good job of, of uh, delegating things out. Mm -hmm. At what point do you sit down with your head coaches, and, and you know, what when does it get to the point where guys, you know, we got to sit down and yeah. it may be time for them to go? Is it do pe or, or people get in the newspaper? What what yeah. happens? What do you yeah. what, what does it come to? Yeah, it's constant. You know, it's constant. You know, it's constant communication. I've got people I rely on, and great people, and Jaggers, Roselli, and Thatcher. They, they manage the weight classes. Uh, you know, Jack, it's hard on, obviously hard on these guys. I mean, these guys are, they're up in the morning with them. They're back in the afternoon. And, and listen, de I want deceit, you know, uh, poor choices. It affects programs. It affects marriages. It affects friendships. It's just, we're, we, we, we make mistakes, you know, and you hope that the mistakes are mistakes that, you know, stay within certain boundaries to be part of a program. So for these guys, the mistakes... It was constant communication with them. There are there's warnings. There's there's maybe at times there's scholarship reduction. Maybe there's uh, holding them out of competitions. You 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 try everything you can to reach them, because for me, once you release them, you feel that the impact you can have on them diminishes. If they're not around you and they don't have your influence, you f you you feel that well now what's going to happen to them? But the bottom line. And the reality is sometimes the lesson is in it's over, you know, and, and, you, and, and I hope that the fall is hard enough and it hurts enough that they're on their knees and they move forward their life from the, from, from the reality that I can't do things I want to do when I want to do them. They're really good people. You know, I love Andrew. I love Cam. I mean, I care about these guys. And, uh, you know, I don't know where Andrew's going to end up. Maybe, maybe Hofstra I'm hearing. And I don't know where Cam's going to end up. But I want to see them grow into, into amazing citizens. And, and I'm confident that they will, you know. 80% of this, yeah. this college wrestling, yeah. feels like it's recruiting. Yeah. Getting, like, thoroughbred athletes. And not just thoroughbred. Yeah. You had two thoroughbred athletes. Yeah. But also getting two are going to be thoroughbred yeah. people, I guess. Yeah. You know, is that stressful? And, and that's the intangible. You, you yeah. recruit someone. You can't get them. Talk about that recruiting process. Can you see that at all? If someone's like a little wild when you're, yeah. you're how do you yeah, how do you judge that? this a lot? You know, John DeJulius Sr. and I know you know the Julius family, 
but uh, you know, we brought him in because he's a, he's a great motivational speaker and he's very, he's very knowledgeable in a lot of areas. So I would say that Julius, Jeff Steber, Burnett, and Jordan have really helped, helped us, helped me a lot. I didn't know a lot of these guys when I moved here. You know, John, because I knew Basillo, recruiting Basillo, but, but we, had a, we had a recruiting called a uh, you know, seminar, a weekend, a retreat, and we, we looked at a lot of college wrestlers who were superstars and didn't make it. We looked at a lot of college wrestlers that weren't superstars and made it. Gavins, Travels, just the guys that we knew about. And we could look at some of their background. And we put so much information on the board. Were they a lefty? Were they a righty? What was their mother's involvement? What was the father's involvement? How many masses did they have? Did they wrestle over the summer? We put as much information about these guys as we could. And then we voted on what criteria are most critical as a group, the group that was in this summit, this recruiting summit. And the bottom line is there were two things. There were two things that were non-negotiables. They were in you, they, they had to have two things. The first thing was impeccable character. Their character had to be there. Red flags are only exasperated. They're, they only come to light more in a college setting. They got red flags in high school when mom and dad are with them every night. You gotta you gotta be weary. So number one was 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 character. Number two was work ethic. Those two things across the board, everyone in the room that was in this summit felt that those two things were absolutes. And when you look back at the ones that went on to be really they, great, whether they were a multiple state champion, Jay Jaggers, or whether they were a non-state champion, Keith Gavin, Travel Delegna, uh, more. Out of, uh, out of uh, Cal, uh, UC, UC Davis. Davis, more. These kids all had their character was was impeccable. Their work ethic, they loved it. Their passion was there, and you can work with people like that. Now that's easy to say. Work ethic, character. Sometimes you don't know all the information on the kid. You feel they got great character. So that that that's that's the crystal ball gray area. Um, but if you know about it, and you still take them, then you better be ready for some challenges. Um. Well, I wanted to get to another point, but so, 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 you know, that, 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 that is critical. Really knowing them, really, really knowing them, their family, the type of people they are, and knowing their character and their work ethic. So, so the other point I want to make is, is just that, um, now it's sticking to that. See, I know that. Now the human element comes in. Okay. I know the character and work ethic. You know, but, oh, this guy is so good. He's so sweet. I mean, look at him. He's won national events. Now, do we have this, what everyone calls self-control, discipline, to say, you know what? We've discussed this. We, 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 this is what we say we're going to stand for. You better stand for it. So that's when it gets more difficult. It's got to be so hard. And it's hard. It's hard because I think we all, you know, I believe in the, in the human condition. I believe people can change, people can grow, people can learn, people fall. And, 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 and when you fall sometimes, you, you, you rise so far above it. So you've just got to manage that as a, as, a, as a person. And to your point, recruiting is the name of the game. You get the right people and you put them in, an, in, a, in, a, in a wildly competitive environment, which we have. We have the environment. You, I mean, we have the best regional training center in the country. We have amazing people in it. We have studs everywhere. We have people in our program that, that most people, a lot of programs, you'll never see one guy like this guy. We have so many tough people. It's just they got to be the right men.